In a previous video, we looked into how Django works, what Django is, and also how this course is structured. In this video, I'm going to be explaining you how Django works along with HTML, CSS, JS, and what all these things are and what is the role of which particular technology. So I'm going to be explaining you all this now. Guys, you might have heard of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we are talking about Django already in this course. In this video, I'm going to be explaining you where HTML, CSS, and JavaScript works. If somebody asks you a very simple question, what do I need to build a website? What should be your answer? Your answer should be you need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build a website. Now you might ask me, hey, and you told me that Django is very useful, very powerful. Where is Django? Surprisingly, Django is not at all required to build a website. You can simply pull a static page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let me explain. I'll explain you why Django is not required and why Django is required to build complex websites. Django just manages how HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is sent to the client. We'll look into this in details. But before that, I want you to understand that one needs HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build a website. So if I talk about basic requirements, necessary requirements to build a website, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript will work just fine. Now I just want to explain a little bit about HTML, CSS and JavaScript's role using a very simple example. I'm going to be taking an example of a car. So if you look into this car, you can see that it has metallic body. So if you go to some car factory, you will see some metallic bodies, which will have no color, no design at all, no engine. This metallic body resembles HTML. What is HTML? HTML is hypertext markup language and all it gives is a simple structure to any website. Now what is CSS? If I talk about the designs, if I talk about uh, this light, which is in shape of an eye, this is CSS. So I'll say um, color plus design. It is very close to CSS in the world of websites. Now if I talk about the engine, I'll say engine, the engine engine I'll say engine is my JavaScript because it is the client side programming language CSS is styling language and HTML is the basic structure of the website now we'll understand how a given website works how a website works is let us say you are here and you request a website from a web server let us say the web server is programming with harry.com programming programming with harry.com this can be any website it can be google.com youtube.com instagram.com or any website that you wish to make request to now this is the client it will say hey server at programming with harry.com give me programming with harry.com slash index.html it will say something like this which is the url so I'll just write pwh.com in short. It'll say that give me pwh.com slash index.html. The server will say, okay, let me look into your request and see if I have to respond it. It'll say, okay, you are asking for some page which is available. So, okay, I'll give you the response. It will prepare HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It will prepare it. What do I mean by prepare? It might pull some data from the database. It might, you know, uh, simply serve a static page. It might also do some calculations and produce some sort of HTML, CSS and JavaScript dynamically. Such kind of websites are called dynamic websites. If I'm not simply serving HTML, CSS and JavaScript, it is called dynamic website. And if I'm serving static HTML, CSS and JavaScript, what I mean by static is that the file is already stored in the server. And what I'm doing is simply sending the file to the client. If I'm generating it as per the client's request, it is called a dynamic website. And a dynamic website is driven by a backend. A backend can be PHP, a backend can be Django, backend can be some sort of framework like Angular, or it can be something like uh, Node.js. So you can use anything in the backend 
and the backend will do the processing and the processing means generation of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We are using Django here because we want to use Python. If you want to use JavaScript in the backend, you might go for Node.js or Deno. If you want to use PHP, you can go for PHP. But if you use Django, you can use the power of Python. You can do uh, all sort of machine learning that is inbuilt in Python through modules like scikit-learn and TensorFlow. You can use those modules, install those modules and very quickly build machine learning prototypes. I personally love Django a lot. Now this framework will generate some sort of files like HTML, CSS and JavaScript and it will send it back to the client. Now once these files are sent to the client, these files are not readable by the client. I repeat, these are not readable by the client. So client by default through his computer by installing a program called web browser, which is Chrome in this case, it gives it to web browser. The client says that, hey, web browser, I don't understand HTML, CSS and JavaScript. What is this? Convert it in the form of a beautiful page and show it to me. Browser says, oh, well, master, I'll do the same for you. Let me do it for you quickly. And this happens in a matter of milliseconds. So once these three kind of files are processed, you see what you see in the website. So if you enter google.com, you see a very beautiful page, a search button, you see I'm feeling lucky button. All those sort of things are generated dynamically and the HTML, CSS and JavaScript is sent to your web browser. Your web browser process all those files and what you see is actually the processed HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, if you click a button or maybe you select something and um, you can do all sort of stuff. You can interact with the pages, all sort of events that you produce in a browser. For example, you might click, you might uh, say uh, control click, or you might press a key, or maybe you, you know, drag an item to some other location. All those sort of things are called events. And all the events are handled using JavaScript, which is a programming language. This programming language works within your browser. So role of Django here was just to generate these HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And guess what? This is the most trickiest part. In fact, this is more than 70% of the work that a server has to do. Generate HTML, CSS and JavaScript because once the HTML, CSS and JavaScript has been generated, it is sent to the client and you are done. So we'll see how all these things work in action. But for now, just understand HTML for basic structure, CSS for styling, JavaScript for client side scripting. And what about Django or any other backend programming language for that matter? It's just producing or generating these HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And a framework like Django makes it super easy for you to generate these HTML, CSS and JavaScript based on the client's request based on the client's request. What is a client request? Client request might look something like programmingwithharry.com slash about, programmingwithharry.com slash messages, programmingwithharry.com slash sign up slash login, facebook.com slash messages, all those sort of requests. Now request can be of multiple type like get and post. And we'll see what these get and post requests are in our future videos. But for now, just think of this entire process as a client sending some sort of request to a web server and web server has to respond. Now web server might as well say that, hey, I don't want to give you this page. This page does not exist or you are not authorized to use this page. All sort of uh, HTTP codes can be sent by a web server and we'll see how all these things work in action. But for now, I hope you have a very clear idea of how a given website works. Now role of HTML, I just want to emphasize a bit more on the role of HTML. Why do you want to learn HTML and what HTML is? HTML stands for hypertext markup language. It is the language of the web. It is the standard markup language, which gives a basic skeleton 
to a given website. So if you see a website from 1998 or 1997, you will see it has a very poor styling. It has just the structure and just the amount of information that it needs to have and it doesn't take user experience into account. All those sort of websites are written just using HTML without any CSS or JavaScript. Now HTML will give your website a basic structure. But again, it will not look like a modern website. The look and feel will not be that good. And you know, you'll not be as happy as you want to be as a web developer. So you should use CSS to style your websites. If you want to have borders, if you want to have animations, if you want to have different sort of colors in the background, in the border, uh, and you know, in the navigation bar, if you want to resize your images, CSS is the thing for you. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and all it does is style your web pages which are written using HTML. So you have an HTML tag and that HTML tag can be styled using CSS if you target that HTML properly. So I might say that all the TDs in my table should be of color red and the background should be yellow. Now this might not look very good but I just want to give you an example. So I can write some CSS like this and I can target different types of elements using IDs, using classes. We'll see all this in action in our videos. So you don't have to worry much about this. It just makes a website beautiful and modern looking. You just have to understand this much for now. Now let's go into the role of JavaScript. JavaScript is a client side dynamic interpreted programming language, which means that once HTML, CSS, is received by your browser what you can do is you can respond to user events if a user clicks on something if a user submits a form or maybe a user drags an item to some other div or other container for that matter you can respond to all those events using javascript programming so the javascript program is written inside javascript and it is embedded in, inside HTML and even the CSS is embedded inside HTML. So your HTML contains JavaScript as well as the CSS. Both of these things are contained inside HTML. We'll see how all this happens. But for now, just remember that JavaScript is used for client side scripting, client side scripting. That's it. Now the most important part, role of Django. What is the role of Django? Why do you want to use Django if HTML, CSS and JavaScript is all required to create a, a website? Why do you want to use Django? I'll tell you why you want to use Django. If you manually create HTML, CSS and JavaScript for all the possible client requests, it will get very exhaustive and very cumbersome for you to generate HTML, CSS and JavaScript manually and keep it on the server. What I mean by that is, let us say you have a blog and you have 2000 blog posts. Now 2000 blog posts are written by most of the bloggers in three to four years. So it's not a big deal. Now, if you keep 2000 static pages in your web server, that's not a reliable way. Let us say you keep these 2000 pages in the form of static HTML pages in your server. And one day you think of restructuring your website. Will you go to all these 2000 pages and change the content one by one? Definitely you don't want to do that manually or programmatically. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is, is store the content of your blog inside a database, have some sort of database manager and have some sort of CMS or a framework like Django in place, which can simply do all these stuff for you. Now, this was one of the examples. There are many other reasons that you should go for a framework like Django. One of which is using machine learning libraries that are already available in Python and many other image processing libraries which are already available in Python. Now, why use Django and what is Django? If somebody asks me what is Django, I say it's a high level Python web framework. What do I mean by high level? High level means that you don't have to go into details. You just tell in a very layman terms to Django what to do. By layman terms, I mean layman in programming. So if you want to run a database query, you can just say that I want to insert this in database. You can simply use the, uh, the Django's built-in ORM and simply you can read, write, update and you know 
do all sort of CRUD operations in the database. This simply makes things easy for you and uh, a web framework will do all these things for you and it will be very easy to maintain huge websites. So you can, you know, do this a uh, rapid development in a clean and pragmatic design. Okay. So this is one of the reasons. Second reason is it has a lot of built in tools. For example, you want to create a authentication system. Do you want to create an authentication system from scratch? If you want to quickly build a website and secure website, what if you make a mistake while creating a, an authentication system? Your website might get hacked. So what you want to do is you want to use Django's auth system, which is already built into Django. So this is one of the reasons you want to use Django. Another reason you want to use Django is models. You don't want to, you know, go to the database and read, write the tables. You want Django to take care of that. And Django takes care of that in a very secure and optimized fashion. So this was another reason to use Django. Now you can focus on writing your app without needing to reinvent the wheel. As I already told you that if you want to say create an authentication system, you don't want to create it. You can use Django's build in authentication system or serializer or whatever. You can simply use the things that are already built in Django and, and you can also plug somebody else's app or somebody else's module, which somebody else has created for you. You can simply plug it in your Django application and it works just fine. Another most important reason is that it's free and open source. It's free, absolutely free. You don't have to pay a penny for this and it's open source, which means that 24 seven developers are working to make it even better and better. And with that, we come to our next point, which is it's fast, secure and scalable with fast. I mean that it has a very fast speed. You will not find the mistakes that common web developers make in Django because it has already evolved over the period of years and it is getting better and better. Secondly, it is secure because you get that security built in using the Django's auth system. If you create an auth system from scratch, you might, you know, commit a mistake in doing that and your website might get hacked. But if you go for Django, the auth system is already very secure. Now coming to the third point, which is scalability. If you get two to three billion users, then you might get into trouble if you are using some sort of unmanaged way of serving data. If you use a framework like Django, it really makes it simple and easy for you to serve contents and maintain scalability at the same time. I hope this discussion was very useful for you. If it was, let me know in the comments. In our future videos, we'll be creating a lot of projects. So you don't have to worry about how these things work in action. I'm not a person who will just tell you what HTML is, CSS is and JavaScript is without making any project. I'll step by step walk you through the entire process. But before that, I want you to access this playlist. If you haven't already, uh, you can go to my channel and you can click on playlist. There are many people who are asking me that how much Python do I need to get started with this free Django course? I would say you can watch this learn Python in one video and it should be enough for you to get started. And as and when we create projects, I'll be telling you how things are working, what all you need to, you know, make things work and how you can take your skills to next level. If you want to build something more complicated than what we will build in this entire course. With that said, I want you to like this video and if you haven't already accessed the playlist, just access it, bookmark it, save the playlist. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.